low back pain, disc herniation. The spine has bony vertebrae and discs. This is the bony vertebrae and these are the discs. Inside the spinal canal lies the neural structures. You find the spinal cord, which ends at the level of T12 L1. The conus middellaris, it is the lower end of the spinal cord. And the coda equina, which begins at the level of L1, and it contains a lot of nerve roots. Low back pain is caused by different conditions of the lumbar spine, including disc herniation. The lumbar spine has five lumbar vertebrae from L1 to L5. As you can see, these are the five vertebrae and they are numbered. These vertebrae are attached to the sacrum at the lower end of the spine. When we say the lumbosacral spine, it is the junction between the lumbar spine and the sacrum, between L5 and the sacrum, which is the tailbone. The discs between the vertebrae are round cushioning pads, which absorbs the shock and resist compression. The normal disc is composed of two layers. The inner layer is soft gelatinous tissue called the nucleus bulbosus and the outer layer called the annulus fibrosus which is strong and thick. Behind the disc lies the spinal nerve root and the coda equina. A lumbar or lumbosacral disc herniation could affect the nerve roots. In the majority of cases of disc herniation, the L4, L5, and L5, S1 disc levels are involved. Typical herniation of L4, L5 disc will affect the L5 nerve root. Typical herniation of L5, S1 disc will affect the S1 nerve root. What are the types of disc herniation? Patient may have protrusion or bulge, a bulging disc with intact annular and posterior longitudinal ligament fibers. So that's a small disc bulge. The second type is disruption of the annular fibers with tail of disc material extending into the disc space, either partially or totally. The third type is a sequestered disc. It's a free fragment without tail extending into the disc space. The fragment may be reabsorbed spontaneously. What are the locations of disc herniation? The most common location, which is a typical location of disc herniation, is posterolateral. And you can see from the diagram, it affects the nerve root. It is the usual location most commonly involving one nerve root, the lower one. For example, an L4 and L5 posterolateral disc herniation will involve the L5 nerve root. The second location of disc herniation is foraminal. It occurs in about 8 to 10% of cases and it involves the exiting nerve root. For example, an L4, L5 foraminal disc herniation will involve L4 nerve root, the nerve root that will exit, the L4. Different than the posterolateral disc herniation, which will involve the traversing nerve root. In case of L4, L5, the posterolateral disc herniation will involve the L5 nerve root, the traversing nerve root. Central disc herniation, it is a rare condition. 
It affects multiple nerve roots. The coda equina predominantly causes low back pain more than leg pain. It may cause incontinence of the bladder and bowel. Urgent diagnosis and urgent surgical treatment is necessary. Early diagnosis of central disc herniation and coda equina syndrome is challenging. The initial signs and symptoms are usually subtle. It is important that you suspect this condition and ask the patient if the patient has any bladder or bowel symptoms. Do a digital exam on the patient and test the perianal sensation and get emergency MRI if you suspect it. Treatment, usually emergency surgery. Timing of the surgery decides the outcome. Early surgery has the best prognosis for recovery of the bladder and bowel function. How about the discogenic back pain, which is internal disc disruption? So there is an early disc degeneration. The patient will have annular tears. Pain is worse with flexion and sitting. It's slightly better with extension. The forward flexion is limited on exam, and the patient does not have radicular symptoms.